Great. Good evening, everybody. I'd now like to call the September 14th, 2020 Parks and Recreation Advisory Board to order. Could we please start with the roll call? Ms. Sue Albrecht? I'm here. Mr. Jeff Allenbogen? Here. Mr. Manol Gangwar? Ms. Paige Lewis? Here. Mr. Dan Olson? Not attendant. Mr. Robert Putnam? Here. Dan Olson said he's camping right now. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Katja Stokely is not here. And Mr. Aaron Rodriguez, Council Liaison? Not here. Okay. Great. We have a Thank you. quorum. We do have a quorum. So meetings are being held remotely due to the governor's safer at home order. Anyone wishing to provide public comment during public invited to be heard must watch the live stream of the meeting for instructions. When the call-in information is displayed on the screen, please call the number displayed, enter the meeting ID, and when asked for your participant ID, press pound. Callers will hear confirmation they have entered the meeting and be told how many people are already participating in the meeting, staff and council included. Callers are placed on hold and muted until they're called by the last three digits of their phone number, at which time they'll be unmuted and invited to speak. Please remember to mute the live stream when you're called upon to speak. Comments are limited to three minutes per person, and each speaker will be asked to state their name and address for the record prior to proceeding with their comments. Okay, I'd now like to move to approval of the agenda. And before we do that, I believe David has an amendment to the agenda. I move we approve the agenda. I think we need to hear from David first and then we can go there. Thanks, Rob. Yes, um, I'd just like to move that we uh, remove the item on the newbie conservation easement and we would move that to um, next month so that we can um, tightly appropriately as a public hearing next month. Great, thanks, David. Do you know, do we need to vote on that or is that staff's prerogative to remove an agenda item? I think it's, a, I think it's staff's prerogative to, to pull that. And it will be approved okay. if you, when the agenda is approved, approve it with the modification or David's change. Okay. Thank Thank you. So I'd like to have a motion to approve the agenda as amended by David. I make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Great. Thank you. Do we have a second? I second that. Great. Great. Thanks, Minaj. All in favor? Great. Thank you. We've approved the amended agenda. And now I'd like to move on to last week's minutes. Does anyone have any changes to the minutes before we move to approve them? Is there any edits? I found minor typos in it. Do we actually care? I don't know if it matters if there's a spelling mistake or a small typo. Is that is that true? Uh, Veronica, can you tell us whether you want to know that or not, or Jeff, I, if you know? I think if you, Jeff, if you've identified those, we should make those corrections. Yes, we appreciate you letting us know. Okay, then I need a second. Um, on, can I continue? Yes, yeah, please. On page three, Oasis is, I believe spelled wrong, unless the plural of Oasis is actually O-A-S-E-S, -E which I didn't know it was, if that's the case. I don't think it is. Um, I don't know. I'm just asking about the way it's spelled at the very bottom of a way, of that page, Parks and Rec Board, page three. It should be IS. That's what I thought. And then I looked for a plural version of that and I couldn't find one. So I think, no. I think it's just IS. Um, I did mark it up and actually, I don't think I ever found, there, whatever else I found, I didn't think was big enough of a deal to say. So that's it. Well, on page four, Macintosh should be spelled correctly. Okay. For Macintosh, Lake Macintosh, or Macintosh Lake is not spelled correctly. Okay. I think you just take out the K. I will correct that. Mm -hmm. 
Any other comments on the previous meeting minutes? Great. Can I get a motion to approve them as amended? I move we approve the um, minutes as amended. Great. Thanks. Do have a second? I second that. Great. All in favor? Aye. Okay, previous meeting minutes are approved. So we'll now move to our first public invited to be heard. We're gonna open up, open up the public invited to be heard. The information will be displayed on the screen for those viewing from home. Please dial 1-888-788-0099, which is a toll free number. And when prompted, enter the meeting ID 879-3781-0859. So we'll now take a five minute break to allow the public to call in. Um, council may turn off their video if you'd like during this time. All right, to those of you who have called into the meeting, um, I've let you into the meeting and we are going to wait here another couple minutes 
um, to see if we have any callers in. And what will happen is I will um, ask you to unmute yourself. And we ask that you mute your live stream. So if you're listening to this on YouTube or wherever you're listening to it, if you can turn the volume down on that, otherwise you're going to hear an echo on your phone when it's your time to talk. Uh, we still have about another minute or so uh, before I take down the slide. And then I will ask you to unmute yourself by calling out the last three digits of your phone number. All right, Vice Chair, it's been about five minutes if you're okay with us proceeding. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. All right, caller ending in 563. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. You could please state your name and address for the record. Hello there. Um, can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. We can, yes. Okay, good. Um, my name is Leo Wilson Valentine. Um, I am calling, I I'm, apologize, I missed the first bit of the meeting, so I don't know if this is without introduction, but I'm calling in regards to um, naming the beach at Union, Fred's Beach. Um, Fred Wilson was my dad. Um, he was also the mayor and a city councilman for a long time. Um, and I just, I wrote up a few comments. So let me read. When I think of the beach at Union, I think of my dad sitting on a picnic bench with his ragged old shorts and sandals waiting for the wind. We talk about happy places a lot these days, and I can tell you with absolute certainty that the beach at Union was my dad's happy place. Another thing. I can say with absolute certainty is that my dad was the driving force behind what Union Reservoir is today. My family has been going to Union Reservoir since the late 80s when it required a membership. Dad had, to learn to, had learned to windsurf on various other lakes in the area, and he was quite possibly the first person to windsurf at Union. Um, when he became mayor, he was passionate about making Union a wakeless lake so that he and other windsurfers would have a safe place to pursue their sport. In the years since, in the years since Union became a part of the city of Longmont, he spent a huge amount of time out there windsurfing, sailing, kayaking, swimming, and more. He built himself a rowing shell some time ago and rowed that thing around the lake at least 100 times. Right around the time he got tired of rowing, he heard about the crazy new fad in California, stand-up paddling. He repurposed one of his old windsurfers, built himself a stand-up paddle, and set out on the lake, becoming quite possibly the first person ever to stand-up paddle on Union. People thought he was crazy. Um, I'm sure that if dementia hadn't got its hold on my dad, he'd still be at Union these days, pioneering some new sport, reviving an old one, or just having a good time waiting for the wind. Please approve the resolution in honor of my father's service to the city of Longmont and his love for Union Reservoir. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for joining us. We can move to the next caller. Okay, this is our next and final caller. Uh, caller ending in 208. I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself. If you could please state your name and address for the record. I think the caller is still muted. Yeah, um, 
asking him to, him or her to unmute okay. themselves. Oh, we are good. Yep, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm uh, Gordon Pedro with 639 Falcon Drive, uh, board chair and members. Thank you for serving on this valuable advisory board. Parks and open space and trails are some of the community's most valuable assets when it comes to the quality of life we all enjoy. I appreciate the opportunity to address you tonight. My main focus is on the proposal to designate Fred Beach at Union Reservoir. I believe this designation is appropriate to honor Fred Wilson's 13 years of dedicated service to the community as mayor and city council member. Fred was mayor in 1993 when I was elected to be city manager. In my 30 plus years serving in public in three different cities, I found Fred to be one of the best elected officials I ever worked with. After he left the city council, we developed a close friendship and enjoyed rowing our skulls at Union Reservoir. Fred was the city's best ambassador when at, at the reservoir. He helped many novices become better at windsurfing, paddleboarding, rowing, and canoeing. The beach at Union was his classroom. Fred Wilson was a visionary and a passionate advocate for increasing opportunities for all members of the Longmont community. One of his early visions was for the city to acquire the surface rights at Union Reservoir so that all Longmont residents could have equal access for recreation. Before the city gained control of the surface rights, only members of the private yacht club had access. And of course, this meant most Longmont residents were excluded. In my opinion, Fred's second great vision for our city involved what most of you know today as Nextlight the fastest internet connection in the country. When the city first launched its efforts to provide the community with high-speed communication infrastructure through a fiber optic backbone, Fred was one who saw the opportunity and supported the effort through, his many, through its many iterations. Finally, Fred recognized the value that Sandstone Ranch could have for our community and supported that effort as resident and city council member. These are just a few of the reasons why I believe Fred Wilson deserves the recognition for his many contributions to our community by having the proposed sign placed at Fred's Beach at Union Reservoir. And since I have a few seconds left, although your first agenda item was removed from the meeting tonight, I support the conservation easement for the new league property, and I think that's a way of protecting our open space in the long run. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thanks for joining us. I just want to thank both of our the speakers because I was lucky enough to know Fred and Fred's Beach would be the greatest honor. And I really appreciate Gordon and, and Fred's daughter for calling in. It was really, really wonderful to hear what you had to say. Thanks, Sue. Any other comments before, or do we have any other callers? I don't see no. any more. No, we just have the two callers. Okay. Um, with that, then we'll close the public invited to be heard. Bob, did you want to just make a comment? Yes, I was going to say that I have no objection to being named that. It's certainly better than Sandy Beach, <laughs> you know, and uh, he certainly deserves some recognition, so. Great. Well, you'll have an opportunity to do that uh, very shortly when it comes up on the agenda. <laughs> so I think, well, with that, we'll close public invited to be heard and move to old business. We have no old business? old business. We should, we are now ready for 6B. Great. Okay, we'll move to new business, and as 6A was removed from the agenda, we'll go to 6B. I'm not sure who's speaking about that. David, is that you? Yeah, this is David. And again, I just echo what some of the, the board members have said. I think um, Gordon and Fred's daughter did a great, daughter did a great job of um, really talking about why this should be named Fred's Beach. Um, but I'd just like to take a couple minutes to kind of talk about why it ended up at Prab. Um, we had um, the family and Gordon approach um, Parks and um, Natural Resources staff to say, could we um, do something for a memorial at Fred out of the beach? And, you know, we do memorial bricks, we do benches. 
Um, and that's within the realm of what we as staff can do. But, you know, the idea of naming a beach um, felt like it was um, at a level that needed, um, I, I think, not only just the procedural process, but the recognition for Fred to go through the PRAB process and council process for resolution. So that's the direction we decided to take since PRAB is responsible for naming parks. Even though this is a full park, we thought it bring it to this board for um, your consideration and your um, vote would be an important piece of this. So as you've seen here, I, I think in the document provided for you that um, Fred was at, you know, I think um, critical in making this a public beach. And I, I'm managing that area now, know how important that is to the public. So throughout the coronavirus, um, knowing how much people needed to get outside, um, needed to have these public spaces, I think it's a, a great place. I've seen how much the public loves it. And I, I think this is a great recommendation the staff supports as well as the community. Great, thanks, David. Uh, yes, Jeff. I guess I just wanted to clarify, like in the in the new business, I'm only looking at the agenda. It says name it in honor of former Mayor Fred Wilson, but then people called in, called it Fred's Beach. Are we going to call it Fred Wilson's Beach? What are, what's the actual proposal? Oh. Could we um, actually, there, there's a sign that the family and friends have actually offered to pay for. So I can bring that up and if you can take a say, look at now, now I'm remembering the other thing that it didn't work in the, in the packet actually was the attachments weren't in the packet. So that's, that's why I didn't notice. Is, is that visible to everyone now? So that's, that's how they'd like it to be. Yes. And then we will work and together. This will be located where? So this is a piece that I don't have the exact location, but we've actually had John Brim, who is the park manager, go out with the friends and family to look at, look at the location. So as you come into the, the beach swim area, that's where it would be located in that area so that you know users of the, the beach would be able to see that. Um, the exact location, I don't have a, a map of that, but um, it was site located by staff. What's the sign made out of? So that's a piece that as we put it up here, um, Kathy Crone, Steve Ransweiler have looked at as well. The friends and family have worked with um, Rabbit Hill um, Science and Graphics. Um, however, we do have standards. We'll probably make sure that it meets those specs and standards. So um, we'll work the, the family and friends to make that work within what they're looking for, but also make sure it meets the, the standards for, this, for the city as well. And what's the top hat and the mustache? You know, um, we didn't, really push back on that. This is all designed by the, the individuals you heard call in this, the, this evening and um, it, it has significance. I'm sure as we move forward, they'll be able to provide some more information on that. Can you tell us, David, what is the process that you need from us? Do you need a formal resolution or? I, would just, I think what I'd be looking for would be um, a vote to say that we could take this forward to council with a re recommendation from staff and well, whatever the vote that PRAB would have, that we would take PRAB's vote plus staff recommendation to council um, and ask for a formal resolution then. So we would be asking for resolution from council. And do you anticipate that there would be any significant public opposition to this? N no, not at all. My only comment is Any other? Oh, my only comment is that um, when I see signs like that places, I actually wish there was a little more explanation. Like I wish, because I appreciate signage when I go places and something is dedicated to someone. I wish it was a little more on there about you know he was instrumental in you know bringing union to the public, um, or at least maybe a blurb um, under Union Reservoir on their website would maybe be an appropriate place to just gonna throw that out there. I, I would just say that I would, I would agree. And again, I, I think at this point as we're bringing this forward um, to get support from staff and the boards, um, that was our first goal. And I, I do think that we would like to have staff work with the family, but respect their intent because I, I would agree. And I think if you go to Ralph Price Reservoir and same, same things that there, we have other city buildings, entities, properties named after people, you get a little bit more information. And I'm sure to the, the friends and family, this means a lot, but for the person that didn't know Fred, I think having that there would be something we, we could probably incorporate in a way that um, we meet their intent, but also um, help those that do not know them. So I, I think that's something that we would definitely want to work with as staff, um, with friends and family to make sure we could achieve that. 
I had uh, one question. Um, it's a great idea to honor uh, Mr. Fred. Uh, I just want to know whether is there any much cost involved in um, renaming the unit reservoir? So as far as um, renaming, I, since it's not named already, I don't think it'd be a, a cost of doing that. I think the you know, websites and stuff could refer to it at this point, but I don't think there's anything out there that really okay. even identifies this one. Piece. So we wouldn't have a renaming piece. We might have some, uh, some costs as we go forward, as we start referencing um, the beach, it would have it as Fred's Beach. The other piece um, is that at, at this point at least, and that's again why um, taking through this board and through council and looking for ways we could fund this. Right now, though, the, the friends and family said they would pay for it. Okay. And um, I think that's a great offer. I think them working with the city, but if the city needs to make changes to, you know, the quality of the sign, the, the, the build of the signs and make sure it meets our standards and prices go up, I would hope that the city would be able to look at um, budget sources that could help offset that. But right now, the only cost that we really have is the sign itself and Again, the family is saying that they would pay for that. Thank you. And just to clarify, it's not renaming Union Reservoir, just naming the swim the beach, beach in honor. Beach. Correct. Perfect. Right. Yeah. Okay. If there are no more questions, uh, I would entertain a motion with regard to recommending this naming to City Council. Jeff? I make a motion. We accept this name for Fred's Beach as stated to go to the city council. Great. Rob, did you have a second? I second it. Okay. Do you, not sure, Veronica, do you want to just repeat the motion for us and then we can vote? Jeff makes a motion to, to accept the name change at Union Beach to Fred's Beach. And, Thank, uh, and we'll recommends that staff move that, share that with City Council, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, great. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Great, the motion passes. Okay, so our next agenda item is items from staff. Are there any items from staff that we want to cover? I, I have something I'd like to talk about or share. Great. So, so late last week, uh, Paige had sent uh, David and I an email uh, about the 2021 budget process and wanted to just share the COVID impact that recreation is currently experiencing. So recreation is required to file, follow a financial policy set by city council that requires us to recover 80% of the costs that we uh, spend in a year. That excludes uh, capital items over $5,000 it excludes uh, free community events like Rhythm on the River and Longmont Lights. It excludes our work with field maintenance and Sandstone Ranch. So based on, on that information, um, we, we are suffering some pretty reduced revenue during 2021. And right now I'd estimate that we're gonna be somewhere between 40 and 50% of what our nor normal revenue is. That normal revenue is uh, right over four and a half million dollars that we're expected to bring in. And uh, this year we will bring in less than 200 million or $2 million. We believe that there's two issues that we have found that, has a, it, that helps with that negative uh, revenue uh, based directly to COVID. The first item is the state and county guidelines on how many people can use our facilities at any one time. Uh, for example, at the rec center, uh, we can only have uh, up to 100 people there at one time. 
Um, and it's based on a, a 25% of your normal capacity or 50, whichever is, is less. And that's based on rooms that have four walls and a door. So we've broken the pool into one room of 50 and then the gymnasium, the track area and the workout area is another 50. And uh, we are averaging uh, with those reduced capacities currently about 35% of our capacity. So the, and the, so the second item is uh, that we found that people are more comfortable working out or going to outdoor facilities and not quite as uh, comfortable going indoors. Just to give you an example of the impact is before COVID hit, we were averaging about 1,200 people a day at the rec center. Right now, it, <coughs> excuse me, it's around 229 people a day. So that, that number, you can see how quickly that can impact your uh, or our revenue expectations. Um, so staff was asked to create an estimate of where we thought we would be uh, in 2021. Uh, we believe we're gonna be at around 25% of our normal revenue of the 4.5 million which means that um, we, will, we will be short $1,127,000 rounded. Um, so with that reduction, cost recovery, the cost recovery policy requires us to reduce our budget by that much. So staff uh, made a, a proposal that we would cut 25% of all of our programming areas excluding regular staff in the matching benefits that go with that. And we would reduce 30% of the hours for our temporary employees. This is going to require many of the regular staff to be more front line, working at the front desk, serving as lifeguards, and also uh, pool managers, field, field supervisors, that sort of thing. The, and then finally, one of the things that I would say is, if things get better in 2021, we have a vaccine or the virus happens to go away, we will have the opportunity to, as revenues grow, to add those dollars back to our, our budget. Staff is going to be going through a process over the next two months to identify what we should continue to offer in 2021 and those items that should be suspended until the time that uh, revenues start uh, uh, increasing. And then we go back to council to appropriate those additional revenues so that we can spend the money and work towards getting back to the four and a half million dollar revenue es estimates or budgeted revenue. Um, Wanted to share that. That's been pretty hard news for the staff. It is a major impact that really none of the other departments or divisions have seen within the city. And so we will keep you posted as we move forward with what our recommendations are. And it's our hope to have a plan by mid-November so that we're ready when uh, the new budget comes into effect in January. Do we have any questions? Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate you providing us that estimate. Um, I have one question and then I'll go to the rest. I just wondered how quickly could the council, if you come to them with, you know, request to appropriate funds back due to increased revenues, how quickly can they act and restore those funds for you to use? It, it takes know? normally a month or month and a half. Generally, the recreation budget is usually spread out through the year. So if something, if revenues start coming in early in the year, and let's say we have the opportunity to do Rhythm on the River again, we have the flexibility to, to move monies to spend and pay for Rhythm while we work towards through the appropriation of the additional dollars. So I think it, it can be done fast and it would have a limited impact on delaying programs from starting. 
Okay, Jeff and then Sue. Thank you guys. Did you have a question? I had a question and I'm hesitant to say it, but I'll, I'll ask and then you can say that's not going to make any difference. But I guess I'm wondering, are there options for doing more parks and I guess recreation type things that would be outside transition period? Like I'm just making up stuff like in Roosevelt Park, there's the covered area. Could there be a workout facility move there where you have treadmills outside, but a fence to protect the equipment or could pools, for example, be open throughout the winter and heater? Is that just a waste of money? And it's yeah, uh, that it'd be really hard to keep sunset. Uh, open much longer. It closes on Sunday. Right. <clears throat> and the challenge is that once it starts getting colder, people tend to say we'll go there, but once the cold weather hits, it it's pretty difficult. And you know, with the sh with the weather that we had last week, our temperatures went from 83 down below 77. And you have to have by code temperatures at at least 77 degrees. And once it starts staying that cold where it's in the 30s and lower 40s all the time, we just can't keep up with the, the heat. And uh, security wise, I don't know that it'd really work to, to move all that equipment out to the pavilion location. We are continuing to do fitness classes in the parks and we're doing virtual classes and we'll continue to do those. But at some point in time when the weather, you know, gets cold, we, we really don't have a lot of options. Makes sense. I have a couple of questions. Yeah. One is, is so is if Boulder County Health changes um, their mandates, do, are you able to change quickly or do you have to go get city council approval? Let's say for example, they raise the numbers they can be allowed in the same room type of thing. No, we do not have to go back to council for that. And one of the things that could happen is if the numbers would go down, the COVID numbers, the number of cases, we could move to what is called protect our neighbors. Based on the preliminary work, our information we've seen, that bumps our numbers from 25% to 50% and starts having a a pretty big impact on uh, the numbers of people that can be in our buildings. The challenge still is, do people feel comfortable? Because right now, if you come into our facilities, you have to wear a mask when you're working out, excluding swimming. You have to wear your mask to the point where you're ready to get in the water. You can go in and swim without it, but you have to put your mask back on right away. So we just are in the last week of a survey that we're doing of, of uh, Longmont residents to see their, how they feel about coming back indoors. And at the October meeting, I'll be able to present that information to kind of help us direct, direct us on where we need to really be spending our time. By far in at Centennial Pool and at the rec center, aquatics is by far the, the busiest of all of our locations. So that was one of my questions. So when you said you could have 50 in the uh, rec center's pool area, mm -hmm. but like it, that is, that's just for like open swim because the fact that we can only have six at a time in the, you know, right. in the lap lanes, could that not be changed to two at a time in each lane or? No, the county, so originally we were allowing multiple people in the lane. About two weeks ago, the county came back with uh, a new guidance that says if it's lap swimming, not in a, an organized program, that you could only have one person in a lane. So at the rec center, if you have all six lanes, that would allow 44 people to be in the hot tub and leisure pool. Okay. So um, my next comment is, and I'm not quite sure I understood it. You said, you know, if things change, you could possibly bring things back like rhythm on the river and so on. Is that the kind of questions you're asking in the survey? Like to me, I would postpone events like that and use that money towards no. more recreational things. I'm just curious about why. I just you use that as an example because that's probably one of the things that will be the first to be suspended. Until we can have large numbers of, of people, there's just no way we can do any types of events. The, the 
questionnaire or the survey was really more generic about what is your opinion about working out indoors? Um, here are the types of cleaning um, things that we're doing. Do you have other things that you would recommend? Um, what, what classes would you be willing to have you or other family members attend, that sort of thing? It was really not about those large events because like I said, we can't have those numbers together yet. And one other comment I will make, because I do use the pool reservation system weekly, is there a possibility that it could be, uh, people could cancel online when they're not gonna be able to make it? Because that's one feature that I think is, personally think is a bit of a problem. Because when I do go swim laps, sometimes the lanes are full, but sometimes there's like three people there because they haven't shown up. I mean, they've made a reservation. Um, is that something that, could happen I, they just I, I believe they can do it that way. I think generally with, I think you have to do it 12 hours before. No, Many no. people are not doing that at all. They're, they're just not showing, especially if they're pass holders. Generally, the people that call are the ones that are pay, paying the daily rate. No, you cannot cancel online even 12 hours before. Okay. I, I was told that too, and I've investigated that at, by asking quite a few people, and the answer is no, you cannot. So okay. I just think that that's something that would be a feature yeah. that would be, I think, helpful. Yeah, and the, there we can't make that kind of modification. It's oh. a out-of-the-box system and difficult at best for some people. But overall, I, yeah, think, you have I think it's working great, just so you know. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's great and, I, and it's very much appreciated. Good. I was just going to ask if you have any idea yet what might be the status for the skating rink and the hockey program since they're outside. We should have a decision made within the next two weeks of whether we will open or not. Financially, it's going to be a challenge because we can only have 25 people on the ice in the lace up area and in the building at one time. So 25 total. And the challenge with that is as people are leaving, the lace-up area in the building are not large enough to handle 25 people. So the county's response is you, you can't go above what you can handle off the ice. So we're, we're working on the financial side of that and we'll be presenting to uh, our director and the city manager in the next couple of weeks. Other questions? Okay, great. If okay, there's nothing thank else, you. thanks, Jeff, for bringing that information. And sorry, we're in this condition. Hopefully, for all of our sake, yeah, <laughs> things will get better sooner than later. Yeah, thank you. Okay, the next agenda item is items. Well, are there other items from staff first? Okay, hearing none, are there any items from the board? Maybe a very short meeting. <laughs> Rob? I uh, volunteered for with Danielle Levine to uh, monitor Macintosh Lake three Sunday, uh, three Saturday mornings actually. And um, that is a, a, I think it's a, it's a, a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, by noon, there were 95 water things on the lake, canoes, uh, canoes, uh, kayaks, uh, paddle boards, all that. Of the children there, many were riding on the paddle boards or in the canoes and so on. Only about half of them had life jackets on. What was peculiar about the thing is all the dogs had life jackets on. <laughs> but in any case, it uh, there were people swimming. They would paddle out to the middle of McIntosh Lake and then jump in the water and swim. And 
you know, we don't have a rescue craft on that lake in case somebody has to get out there. And we certainly don't have lifeguards or we don't have anything. And I have a feeling, especially on the weekends on warm summer days, it's kind of out of control. We don't have any, there's a lot of dangers or hazards and not a lot of control. I, I don't know that signs would, would fix it, but it wouldn't hurt. But uh, it is being used a great deal because people can't get into union. And almost half the people I interviewed were from more than 10 to 30 miles from Longmont. That's all I have to say. It's just an interesting, um, I don't know what the rest of the survey is. I only know about my Saturday mornings. But uh, it seems to me that there's a hazard there. And uh, on Parks and Rec, we should consider addressing that at some point. David. Yeah, I, I just want to say, uh, one, thanks for volunteering. I know you volunteer a lot, Rob, and um, this is a, a project that we really were getting called out to um, Lake McIntosh quite a bit um, because of masking and social distancing. And really, I think that was a result of how much use is out there and just a change in use for the neighbors. I can imagine if you lived out there, what your backyard has turned into. Um, as I went out there and looked at things though, um, what I saw is a little different than people had a different lens with the, the, the neighbors there. And I would say exactly what Rob said. My biggest concern um, was the number of people on the water, which wasn't strictly the number, but the number of people who did not have personal flotation devices. People are out there, if it, if it was kids, if it was adults, it doesn't matter if you're um, a long time canoeer or kayaker, um, you fall, you hit your head and it's, we don't have anything out there to rescue people. So that was the first piece. And the second piece was the swimming, which is not allowed there. Um, again, no lifeguards. And we don't test that water. The state requires that if we have a beach, we have to have water quality testing. Since we don't have a beach, we don't do that. And we know what's upstream from that with cattle and agriculture and the, sl the, the low depth of that water that it gets warm pretty quickly. So um, we definitely have some concerns about the water quality there that we're just unaware of at this time. So one, I want to thank you for being out there and volunteering. And two, just so Prab knows it is probably one of my biggest concerns is how we go forward with, with managing that body of water. Um, because as I've told council, it's not going to go back to the way it was. Um, we, we talked about, you know, Jeff talked about things going back to normal. Um, if there's a if vaccine or if there's, you know, the virus runs its course. But those people have found Macintosh. There is no entry fee like there is at Union. Um, we don't have a controlled entry point, so we can't just limit the number of people. So uh, I think we're going to have to start figuring out how we manage that property um, responsibly for the users, for the wildlife, and for the neighbors. Big topic tonight, but um, thanks for bringing that up. And Danielle um, is starting to pull all that information together and should be able to provide um, Prab with a better, well-rounded report once she pulls that information together. There, there, the other thing was that there were a lot of cars that uh, the parking lot. I was at um, uh, Fleming Park, which is uh, not on a, on Shore Road or something. And the day I was there, the days I was there, Saturday and Sunday were particularly crowded. Um, it's an interesting phenomenon, but uh, a lot of cars were parked on Lake Shore Drive or whatever it's called in the uh, bike lane all the way down because the parking lot was too small. Uh, I don't know what the answer is there other than maybe just saying don't don't go on the lake. I mean, it's drinking water or whatever. But uh, I, I do think that uh, it has to be thought. You have to think about how it's being used and how it's sort of out of control of the city in some ways. It, it's all people who just show up from other places like Niwot and Lions and some people even from places like uh, um, Pennsylvania. Colorado. Yeah, yeah, because they couldn't go to Stanley <laughs> Lake. They were up at McIntosh. Yeah. And again, David, do you know when Danielle would have her um, survey results or when there might be more to report about potential action? So since she's not here to, to say no, I would say we could probably have something by next meeting for you. <laughs> That'd be great. Thanks. And again, I, I think... Um, Okay. I'm sorry, just to, to the parking piece is something that we get called out on a lot. And again, this is a challenge for people who live in areas that are used to be able to park in front of their house and that parking spot's gone. It's, 
is very inconvenient for those homeowners. Um, we have, I have been paying, or the city's been paying, we're gonna work it out, but Jeff Satter and PD have been great. We've had extra duty officers out there every weekend until Labor Day. Um, and there has not been a whole lot of illegal parking. It's just a lot of parking. Um, so we've been watching that as well. So we're trying to watch the public health issues from the masking, distancing, swimming, boarding, um, and parking. And it's, it's just gonna be a lot of challenges. I think it's something that we may wanna look as a board on what the recommendations were for the master plan if those are still obtainable objectives and what we wanna do. One of, one of the things I noticed was in the morning, the people using the park, not on the water now, we're talking about the people on the sidewalks and, you know, we're, we're uh, senior citizens. Until about 10 o'clock, from then on until two or three in the afternoon, it's all young people. And then about four or five, it's senior citizens again. <laughs> it's a peculiar, you know, it's an interesting phenomenon in any case. But the senior citizens weren't swimming. They weren't doing any water sports or anything. They were walking or walking their dogs or whatever. So when you went, yeah. to, when you went to city council, David, did they direct you to have um, surveying done? Or what, what, was, what were they, did they give a direction or? No, we, we didn't. Um, it was really me trying to, I, I think one of the challenges that we have is try, what my goal was in the survey um, was try to give council a broader perspective on what's happening out there because it, it's, it's not to diminish the calls I get, but the calls are coming from people who are being directly impacted by the increased use. So if that's the only information you're getting, it's hard when staff or PD shows up and says, well, you know, it really isn't as bad as that so what what does it really look like so i was trying to give a little bit more objective um bit of information to council from people like rob and other volunteers that don't have it's not staff just saying you know it's it's fine and it's not the neighbor saying it's horrible so it really for me was trying to get a little better look at what was really happening out there throughout the day different times of the day and as rob mentioned you know we were doing morning surveys afternoon evening and weekend so um that, that was what my real goal and it, i guess it was for Council, but also for me as you know, trying to manage that facility and, and hopefully for Prab and this body too, as we go forward, um, the information you typically get us from people that are complaining, this is hopefully a little bit broader, broader view of what's happening out there. <laughs> I apologize. <coughs> yeah, and I have to agree with Rob and I know everyone agrees. It, it would be very tragic for something to happen and then, you know, of course have be very reactive because in right. the past, things like that have happened in the ditches and so on, where some child is drowned. And um, I would, I know you want to be, we all want to be proactive, but is the signage really, is there a lot of signage that says no swimming or is it, I don't go over there often enough to really remember. Um, yeah. I don't, go ahead, Rob. Talking, talking to the people, I was interviewing people too, in addition to other things. They all knew there was no swimming in McIntosh Lake. They knew that there wasn't one person who didn't know it. And yet there they were <laughs> out there swimming, you know. So I don't, I don't know if a sign will solve the problem particularly because of people. It was a hot day and I was 90, you know. I can understand them jumping in the water or going for a swim, but I'm just saying that they, they knew that it was drinking water and they still went swimming. So, and the, the bathroom, the, the, the outhouse or whatever seemed adequate for most of the people who were in and out. They came, they, they went paddleboard, they brought their paddleboard out, got in their car and left. It wasn't like they spent any time in the park. Particularly. And I think those, those are exactly the pieces of information we're looking for because it's easy for me as, and I, I will say someone's been doing this you know, long enough, you can get jaded and say, um, science just won't do it because we have gone out there. We've had volunteers putting up additional signs and they're all like, well, there's a sign right there that says it. And we're putting another sign up right next to it. That's going to get blown down. So there was a little bit of, you know, I think from the staff sign side that we, we have sufficient signage. Um, and this just kind of helps reaffirm that. But I, I do think um, when you have people from other areas and stuff, Providing people with enough information to help them do the right thing and make the right decision is something I'd rather err on the side of doing that. But um, it's just one of the tools in the toolbox. And, and again, it, it's not going to do it all, though. Jeff? 
What are the possibilities of altering the parking to influence how the resource is used? So we've had our transportation um, group look at that. And um, again, looking at how those streets are designed to have cars parked along the side of the road on both sides and still allow for emergency vehicles and vehicles to get through there. Um, if you were to close down Lakeshore Drive, they have moved one block to the west. So the people who have a problem right now, the problem be the people one block over. Um, and when you have a spot, what I'm seeing out there too, and this is why I think the survey is important, um, you're having dad drop the family and the blow up paddle board and the pop up tent off right at the lake. And then he just circles the neighborhood looking for a spot. If that spot's one block, two blocks or three blocks away, um, you're gonna to continue to have that sort of pressure. So um, I think it's gonna be a, a constant challenge of just, if you just close down parking right up there, there's gonna push out. And I'm just gonna example I'll give, um, I was someone else's horrible um, user this last weekend. I had my first in-person race, which was great down at Sloan's Lake. And that poor neighborhood, looking at through the lens I look at it now, you could not get an emergency vehicle through those streets. It, it, there was just no place that wasn't packed in that neighborhood out there. So um, I don't know how we move forward, but I think we have to start looking at creative ways of, of doing this. But it, it's something that I think with people being asked to get outside and do things outdoors and keep distances, these spaces have become very important to people. So I don't think we want to take them away, but how do we manage them in a way that um, keeps everybody safe? Great. Any other items from the board? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll move to the second public invited to be heard. So we're now going to up, open up the public invited to be heard. The information will be displayed on the screen for those viewing from home. Please dial 1-888-788-0099 and when prompted, enter the meeting ID 879-3781-0859. We'll now take another five minute break to allow for people to call in.
Vice Chair, we didn't have anybody call in for the public invited to be heard. You're muted, Paige. Automatically muted. <laughs> uh, if all the council can come back on camera, um, I'd like to entertain a motion that we move to adjourn the meeting. Sue, I can't hear you, but I think you're moving to adjourn. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. I second Great. the motion. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Okay, great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Have a everyone. good evening. Thank you. Nice job. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.